Hello there, this is Critical from Critical Media. Just taking a look at the 2024 story collection release of Ali by Junji Ito, of course. And what we usually do at this channel is give you an idea of what to expect if you ever come across these books in the wild. So we go over the exterior, some bonus material, art and plot points, and then a brief review at the end. Although in terms of the bonus material, we might just, uh, you know, skip that one because with these story collections, you almost never get them. Uh, those are more reserved for like the uh, more linear or completely comprehensive storylines from Ido. But nonetheless, at least in this case, um, walking around the exterior, you know, being the first uh, release of 2024 of these collections, very much consistent with the previous ones. So yeah, a pretty much a green, almost emerald aesthetic to it. Pretty awesome in that light. And yes, the uh, titular story is being pretty much well rep represented here. Pretty awesome, actually. And at least a typical spine design. I love the little uh, profile they chose for this one, personally. I think that's from the uh, Town With No Road storyline. Actually, it is. And, you know, your typical fare on the exterior. But yeah, just the uh, gloss spine being the consistency with all the other story collections, that's for sure. And at least it being a story collection. But you know what? Maybe just in lieu of the uh, bonus material, you are at least getting these uh, green bookends you know very much in theme with the other ones but anywho uh, being a story collection though yes maybe it's wise just to take a look at the contents just to make sure you know what you're getting here right so yes uh, Ali of course uh, Descent which is my personal favorite The Ward awesome The Inn very intricate uh, Blessing very personal almost might be uh, the one that gets turned into a movie of the bunch uh, Smokers Club Mold Town of No Roads, I knew that's what it was called, uh, Memory and Ice Cream Bus. Um, but one thing I got to say about all the stories in this and this particular release, this might have some of the finest works from him. Almost every story, with one exception, but almost every story creates that threat and menace angle that, to be honest, is very satisfying in each book. You know, sometimes you'll read some of these story collections and maybe one or two, three might be duds, but in this one... All but one are amazing. But anywho, at least on to the uh, titular titled uh, story here, Ali. Essentially Ishida, he's a college student just trying to find some sort of boarding. All the other students are getting apartments. He just needs a room. He finds this really sweet one near campus. It's pretty awesome. However, uh, there has to be something, right? Um, so yeah, it's just Ishida, the landlord, and her, her daughter, um, Shinobu. Basically, those are the only uh, moving parts in the story. But um, essentially, yeah, he notices that there's this weird alley, or should I say this weird walled up alley, right next to the building. And it's like, what's it all about? But um, very intriguing how the story plays out. It does kind of reveal a little too much by the end. You know, I always mention that. Usually horror is best when you don't tell us the whole story. But admittedly, there is a bit of, you know, one loose end that keeps you wondering. But I always like this scene because this guy, he's wondering what the heck is making all this noise in that alley. And he almost kills himself just trying to like crawl out and see. It's kind of funny that he goes out of his way that much, you know. It's very intriguing. Um, but nonetheless, just a, a very intriguing kind of entry, that's for sure. Very much on the, on the level, that's for sure. And as you can even see, the final image is pretty awesome. But uh, personally, Descent. This second story here, it's my favorite of the bunch. It reminds me a bit of uh, that hanging blimp story from uh, Shiver. But essentially, uh, it, it's very similar to that story. Unfortunately, this town, it's suffering from many folks uh, just committing suicide out of nowhere. A lot of depression or whatever. Uh, even this guy finds his wife even trying to kill herself and he can't understand why. Like, at least you're giving the impression there's no reason for her to be like that. And then, you know, throughout the story, you're learning it's actually a city-wide pandemic or town-wide pandemic, I should say. But then that, that kind of leads toward this uh, next aspect where a lot of the villagers, they kind of have this group mentality. They all just go missing in the middle of the night kind of thing. One thing I love about Ito is he introduces this character early, this one witness to everything. But just as everything kind of goes like kind of crazy all over again. But um, the reason why I bring it up is because it creates this natural aspect of why the story flows the way it does. Like why people didn't know what was really going on. And then when you finally get more information, 
it just it just adds to the anxiety. It's pretty trippy. But yeah, as mentioned, all these people go missing, and then all of a sudden, as you're kind of seeing in these panels, people are just falling from the sky. And everybody has this, any person who is somewhat lucid has these like weird dreams or these weird aspects that like the end of the world is coming or something. Like I said, it creates a lot of gravity for just a 30 page story. And I loved it, especially by the end of it. You're like, oh, wow. Like, I can't believe they actually went there with it. Pretty intriguing. But um, a next story here, The Ward. Pretty awesome. And honestly, a lot comes from this uh, first two pages. Just pay attention to the events of this page because it's very intriguing. As, as you can kind of see, it starts off with a traffic accident. And ironically, the two drivers end up in the same hospital. So yeah, Hashimoto and uh, Sugie. And I love how at the very beginning of the story, as you're seeing, you get this impression that, yeah, Sugie is just on Hashimoto. Like he, she swears that, yeah, you're the one who hit me. You're paying for the damages. And how, mu how angry she is at her. Like she almost always brings it up. But um, that's all, that's all, you know, a bit to digress. The point is, ironically, they end up in the same hospital, in the same ward room even, with other patients. And that's the intriguing aspect of the story. It's kind of like a hive mind, almost, uh, what's the word, parasite kind of storyline. But it's it's intriguing because, like I mentioned, I brought that up at the beginning because that does play pretty much very well into the end of that storyline. You'll love it, especially. Like, yeah, it's just kind of com comedic at the end, I'll say that. Um, but nonetheless, um, moving on here with the end. Uh, an awesome little story because, you know, it's about, what, 30 or 40 pages, but it's interesting. It almost feels like two stories in one where, yeah, it's just this girl uh, she's mentioning. I forget it. her name is uh, Mitsuo. Yeah, that's her there. She's just basically telling a story from her childhood of, yeah, her father just all of a sudden getting this obsession to turn their house into a hotel or a little inn because for some reason he thinks there's a hot spring on their property and he just keeps digging and digging and digging. Um, you may find this one's very familiar to other Edo books as well. Because, yeah, he does kind of do something similar to this. I forget which uh, story collection is. My apologies. But um, essentially, she he, she tells this story about, yeah, he's just obsessive about doing it. You know, um, the basically the mother and the daughter end up moving out. And I like how the story ends up flashing forward. So now it's her and her uh, boyfriend, I guess, uh, Fukushima. And she tells him the story, and now he wants to investigate it. It's pretty... Pretty intriguing, nonetheless. But um, some of the imagery you get in this book is trippy. Like, very heavy narrative. Let's just put it that way. Uh, it ain't just a hop spring. Let's just put it that way. Um, but I find that this story reminds me a lot of that, uh, you know, that little adaptation that Ido did for um, Hirokatsu Kira. Because even that guy had a very similar story to this one. So I almost feel like Ido kind of borrowed from it. Not, like, plagiarized. I just mean borrowed. Uh, these stories actually came from uh, Asahi Shimbun back in like 2011. So, yeah, I guess you could take it there. Uh, probably one of the best stories, the one, as I mentioned, that could probably be, probably be turned into a film is this one, Blessing. So just a, a man trying to get a father's blessing to marry the daughter. So Kiyosuke and, forgive me, uh, Mizuzo. Uh, forgive me, Mizuzo. Yeah, that's it, Mizuzo. Um, basically, yeah, he's just trying to... Can't, continually get curry favor with the father just to get him to say yes can i marry your daughter already and it, it's kind of this weird creepy thing because even the son is in in on it too he's also telling him not to marry the daughter it's weird um but it's interesting how like yeah this guy he seems well to do they kind of paint him to be like a handsome fellow you know he's in i guess dental school and all that jazz but i like how this story progresses because you know like at a certain point he kind of becomes jaded and then you find out, like, as the story progresses, all of a sudden they want him to come back, but at the same time still not accepting him. There's clearly something else going on. But you're kind of seeing it. it's pretty striking art. And also, yeah, the narrative itself is pretty heavy. Like, it has its very much heavy emotional ups and downs. Like, it's got some baggage and weight to it. Very awesome narrative. Um, but, yeah, here comes a Smokers Club. I have to admit... Of, the, of the, all the stories, this was the one I was hinting at that's probably the weakest one. It's not bad. It's more feels like a PSA from Ito to like stop smoking. But uh, yeah, essentially, yeah, it's just high school students. Your typical cliche narrative where, oh yeah, it's cool to smoke. One guy just finds better cigarettes than everybody and 
it's like the talk of the town almost. Everybody's wondering where he's getting these cigarettes from. But um, probably the one saving grace of this book is, yes, this aspect, this imagery. I love this shot. Pretty trippy. You don't usually see that often. So once again, you know, thank you for introducing that to my mind. Creepy. But yeah, it ultimately, though, does feel kind of flat compared to all the great stories that we were getting, such as even this one, Mold. Another banger. Essentially, this yeah, young businessman, traveling businessman, he seems to work in the States more. And he rents out his house in Japan. And ironically, he rents out his house to an old school teacher of his on the recommendation of his brother, I guess. But um, as you're kind of getting the, from the title of the book or title of the story, mold. Yeah, he comes back and sees all this creepy mold. And yeah, it does have a bit of a supernatural aspect, as you one might think, especially with Ito. But um, it definitely reminds me a lot of some H.G. Geiger kind of artistry here. Very impressionable work, that's for sure. Like, super creepy when you look at some of this stuff. Ugh. Anyways. But yeah, that's what I mean. This one's probably the closest to the gross-out humor of the bunch. Or sorry, gross-out humor. The gross-out stories that you'll get from Ido sometimes. But uh, this one, The Town of No Roads, probably is the most intricate of the bunch. And ironically, it's the longest of the bunch as well. It's like 70 pages compared to the other ones, which were like maybe 30 or 40. But yeah, this one, it feels like it's three or four stories in this one section here. So yeah, it just starts off with this weird high school drama. Somebody trying to brainwash this girl into liking him. The whole Aristotle thing. Yeah, this isn't the first time I've heard of uh, that technique. Just basically whispering to somebody while they're sleeping. Trying to brainwash them. It, I like how it starts off like that. And then the story has a second turn with it. You can't tell what's real and what's fake. It almost has like a Freddy Krueger kind of aspect to it. And then the ending is pretty sweet too. Even the actual town of No Roads, as the, as the title suggests. Um, this story is very intriguing because it actually deals with a lot of different manias, especially the whole concept of privacy or our false sense of privacy. You know, it's like the last bastion or freedom we have. And it's intriguing how this story kind of tackles it. Uh, even a little bit of nudity in this one. That's how. That's what the kind of subject matter we're talking about here. Very, very trippy stuff. Uh, but speaking of trippy stuff here, yeah, memory. Another banger here. Uh, basically, this girl, she keeps having dreams. Yeah, she's, you know, as usual with Ido, he tends to draw certain women, like, in a, you know, pretty light. And yeah, she's super hot, I guess. <laughs> I guess as per Ido's works. But um, that's kind of the irony, is that she has this reoccurring dream of this one section of her life that she just remembers being ugly. And she can't understand like why she keeps having this weird memory. It plays out pretty intriguing in an in intriguing fashion. And the turn at the end of the story is pretty trippy. When you read it, you're like, oh, wow. Okay, so we're just going to walk over that, that little detail? Okay, that's kind of creepy. But yeah pretty heavy by the end of the story let's just put it that way um and then finally uh, ice cream bus a story that i'm surprised that ito uh, did but you know what you'll notice it has more of a painted style compared to the rest of the, the uh, stories in this book so yeah just a, a single father and his son i guess he's got custody this weekend or whatever and yeah just this weird ice cream bus shows up and not only does it come to serve ice cream it even takes the kids on a a little tour of the city and all the kids are, like, all obsessed about it and everything. I couldn't help but think of Ice Cream Man, the, the Max Prince uh, and Marazzo story. I love that story, by the way. And I couldn't help but think of it in this case. Because, yeah, by the end of this story, you're like, oh, what? You Let's just put it this way. You would never have thought of that kind of ending. Or should I say that human beings could end up that way? It's pretty trippy when you read this one, but very horrific by the end. I guess maybe this would be the second uh, body horror uh, story, but very trippy. And like I said, it almost it's almost like an homage to uh, Ice Cream Man, if only this wasn't made like maybe 10 years prior, but still, it's pretty amazing work there. But anywho, I have to admit, as mentioned, uh, of these story collections, this one's been incredibly strong. Like, it was one where I didn't want to finish it because it was so good. <laughs> like, I realized I read, like, almost all the stories. I was like, you know what? Let me just give it one more day just to flesh it out a bit. But I loved going through this one. And I imagine you guys will, too. 
But hey, that's just my two cents on the matter. Hopefully you folks uh, maybe pick this one up. This one is definitely a pickup. Yeah, some of the story collections you can kind of pass over, I can understand. But this one, absolute banger. I'd say like this one's really like a, like what's the word? More like a front runner for like best of, in breed. I'd say Deserter is still the best only because it's like Ito's overall history of his work. But this one, super strong release. I love these stories. But anywho, I wouldn't mind seeing your comments down below as always. And hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video. Y'all folks take care.